pray to the Lord. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you because you're in the midst of us. Thank you for your sweet presence moving, Lord, in the lives of your people. Father, we pray that you will open the windows of heaven and pour out your blessings upon the hearers. I pray, Father, that your anointing will break the yoke in our hearts, remove the burden, Lord, from our shoulders. Father, we thank you for your message. We thank you for your people that will receive your message, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to bless us today in the mighty name of Jesus. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. Thank you so much. Before I get started, I want to share with you a funny story, okay? I want you to laugh first. <laughs> all right? It's about a story of three friends. And they were arguing with one another for years. They argued for years fiercely whether Jesus is white, black, or brown. Matthew says to two of his friends, I believe that Jesus is white. Uh, but Mark responds, no, 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 I don't believe that Jesus is white. I believe that Jesus is black. And then the Filipino dude, you know, blurts out, his name is Lucas. And Lucas said, no, the two of you are wrong. He isn't white. He isn't black. He's brown. He's Filipino. And then all of them traveled in a car one day. And as they were traveling, they got into an accident. And all of them died at the same time. So all of them got into the heaven, right? And they appeared before St. Peter. And they asked St. Peter to know who is right. And they asked, St. Peter, is Jesus white, black, or brown? And then at that very moment, Jesus showed up. And Jesus said, Buenos dias, mi amigos. <laughs> so Jesus is Hispanic. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. This morning, folks, I want to share with you a topic that God put in my heart. And this topic is very, very interesting to say the least. This command of God refrains us from judging other people. You know, this command, we, we love this command the most because we want to announce this to other people. Don't judge. Judge not. But interestingly, this is also a command that we often break. Right, folks? Let's open the Bible. Let's go to uh, our text. Let's open our Bible to Matthew 7, 1 to 6. Verse 1, it says, Do not judge, or you too will be judged. Can you say to the person on your right, on the left, judge not? Amen. Judge not. All right? Judge not, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. For in the same measure you judge, others will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Verse 3. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take this speck out of your eye? When all the time, there is a prank in your own eye. Jesus has a sense of humor here, right? How can you say, let me take this speck out of your eye? Let me take out, remove the pooing out of your eyes. When all the time, there is a plank, there is a log or a plank in your own eyes. Verse 5, you hypocrite, first take the prank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Verse 6, 
Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces. So our text is taken from Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 to 6. All right? Well, the Bible says, judge not, folks. Do not judge. Can we go back to verse 1 and uh, verse 2, please? Verse 1 and verse 2. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged. And with the measure you use, it will be measured to you, folks. Be very, very careful when you judge people, especially when you judge people with a critical spirit. You got to be very careful because if you judge them, you too will be judged. See, if you want people to judge you, you judge other people. If you want people to say something bad about you, go say something bad about other people. If you want people to condemn you, you say you condemn other people as well. Whatever you tell them, folks, he will come back to you. So you got to be very, very careful, folks. We as Christians, religious people, we tend to judge other people. Is that right, folks? We want to announce to people, don't just, but we as Christians, we often break this command. So folks, be very careful. Now let me share with you the three reasons why people judge. The first one is, I have an acronym, the first one is S, the second is, is I, and the third one is N. It's S-I-N, it's easy to memorize. Okay. It's sin, right? So the first one is self-righteousness. See, people judge because they are self-righteous. See, folks, those people who are self-righteous, they want to lower down God's holiness, and they want to increase their own holiness. Folks, Jesus told of a parable of two men, two men, the Pharisees and the tax collector. Both of them went to the temple, and they prayed. And the Pharisee folks stood by himself, and he prayed to God, and he said, Lord, I thank you, because I'm not these other people. They are robbers, and evildoers, and, and they're adulterers, and they're murderers. And I thank you, Lord, that I'm not even like this tax collector. Lord, thank you, Lord, because I tithe. I give my tithe. I fast twice a week. Oh, thank you, Heavenly Father, that I'm not like these other people. And folks, the tax collector, the publican stood at a distance. He wouldn't even look up to heaven. And he beats his breast. And he said, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Folks, in Greek word, a sinner is the sinner. The worst of all sinners. Lord, have mercy on me. The worst sinner. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. And Jesus said, that man, the tax collector, who humbled himself, he went home justified, and the other one just went home. So folks, be very, very careful. You know, some people, they judge because of self-righteousness. They think that they're always right all the time. They memorize the Bible. They know the Word of God. They judge other people. Folks, you got to be very careful because it will go come back to you. I heard of so many ministers in the past, they would stand behind the pulpit and they would lend us other people who live in sexual sin or sexual immorality. And folks, what happened? They too fell in the same situation, in the same scene. So you got to be careful not to judge other people, especially when you judge them with a critical spirit. Amen. So self-righteousness, self-righteous. Oh, you know what? Mm, uh, he's not tithing. I tithe. He's not tithing. You know, oh, he's a murderer. Oh, he's an adulterer. You know, he's, he, folks, please. You know what the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11? Make an effort. Make it as your ambition to live a quiet life and mind your own business. Amen? You know, even if it is true, folks, 
You have to be very careful not to judge them with vindictive spirit. Not to judge them with their critical spirit. Not to put them down. Amen? Give the Lord a hand of praise. Thank you, Lord. Self-righteous. Self-righteous. Remember, folks, if you judge people, remember if you say something bad about other people, Proverbs 18, 21, life and death is in the power of the tongue. Amen? If you say bad words about them, if you condemn them, if you judge them, folks, man, it can cause harm. It can cause death in your relationship with other people. Amen? The second reason why people judge is because of insecurities, you know? We want to judge people by our standards. We want to get them to act like, like how we act or how we think or how we do things. We want them to be like us. We feel insecure. We have the spirit of envy. We have the spirit of jealousy, folks. Folks, you got to be very careful. You know, sometimes we see our friends, oh, man, look at John. He's driving a BMW. That's very, very expensive. He's, he's, he's not a, a nurse or a doctor. He's just, uh, you know, a minimum wage uh, laborer. How come he's driving BMW, you know? Please don't do that, folks. Some people like, maybe you're just insecure. Maybe you're not driving BMW. That's why you say that, you know. So you got to be very, very careful. And sometimes on Facebook, you see people vacationing. Oh, look at that. Man, look at Mario and Maria there in Mexico, Cancun. They are vacationing. That's very, very expensive. Well, they are staying there for one week. Man, look at that. Where did they get the money, you know? Folks, you got, yeah, maybe you're just jealous or something, you know? So, folks, you got to be very careful. Look at my friend. I saw him on Facebook. He went to this restaurant. Man, that's very expensive, you know? That one menu, man, it's just maybe like, you know, 50 bucks or 90 bucks, you know? They can just go to this cheap restaurant and pay like nine bucks. Look at these people. Right, folks? We have a tendency to judge other people because of our insecurity. The third one, folks, is naivety. Can you say naivety? Meaning ignorance, lack of experience, lack of wisdom, lack of judgment. In Filipino, ain't not. <laughs> Maybe you saw somebody, your friend, look at, look at my friend. I, I actually, I saw him at the restaurant. He is eating and somebody with him, a beautiful lady, beautiful lady. And then you tell your brothers and sisters in the church, you tell your pastors, you tell your families, your husband and wife. And what happens? The rumors, the false rumors are like spreading all around, folks. And then later on you find out that actually that lady is his cousin, Ingot. Right, folks? Right? Naivety. Sometimes we just out of our ignorance. You know, so, um, one time there was this woman with five children, right? This woman and with five children, uh, they went aboard a train, right? So on the train, folks, you know, the kids are uh, running all around helter skelter, you know? And they were throwing toys and everything. And then the man in the train said, oh, look at this mother, you know? The mother is not doing anything. The mother is just sitting down. Oh, look at this mother. She's a very bad mother. She, she doesn't pay attention to, to, to her children. Look, she's very bad. She's a very bad mother, you know. Maybe she's an unbeliever. Maybe, maybe she doesn't go to holy ground, you know. <laughs> but then there was this other lady besides that mother. And she asked, hey, ma'am, is there something wrong with you? And she said, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry because I just got a news, you know, a very bad news, you know, my husband got into an accident and he just passed away, he died. Right? Hang on! You have to find out first what's going on with the mother before you pass judgment on that mother. Right, folks? A lot of us, you know, fall in the same sin. So you got to be very careful. That's why Jesus said, judge not or you too will be judged. Let's go back to verse 3. The Bible says in verse 3, Matthew 7 of verse 3, the Bible says, Do not look at the speck of your brother's eye. A lot of us are like, you know, some people, 
you know, they're like an expert professional uh, fault finders or spec finders. They go around, they dig up other people's faults, and they want to spread the, the false information about those people. The Bible says, why do you look at the speck of dust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say, let me take the speck out of your eye when all the time there is a plank in your eye? Folks, you got to be very, very careful. Before you judge somebody, you have to look at yourself first. Maybe you may be judging other people. Oh, that person is committing adultery. Oh, that person is living with a woman outside his marriage. Oh, he's going to go to hell. And then you put it on Facebook, you know. Right, folks? You don't do that, folks. You're going to look at yourself. Because the Bible says that all of us are sinners. Is that right, folks? You may be saying, oh, he's committing adultery. He's that. He's a murderer. But you, how about you? Maybe you are looking at pornographic movies. In the privacy of your room, nobody sees. You say to them, you are not tithing. You're, all, you're always, you're always uh, working. You don't go to church. You know, you judge other people, you know. But you yourself, maybe there is pride in you. Maybe you have a spirit of jealousy, or maybe there is a spirit of envy, or maybe there is a spirit of bitterness in your life. So, folks, all these things the Bible says, you know, the Bible says those murderers and, and proud and coward and revilers and slanderers and all this, you know, they don't inherit the kingdom of God, folks. Be careful when you judge other people. Look at yourself first. Right, folks? It's very, very important to look at yourself first. Verse, let's go to verse 5, please. Verse 5. Oh, Eric, what do you mean? You are promoting a, a spirit of passivity. You're promoting a spirit of apathy. You're, you're promoting a spirit of insensitivity. So that means, Eric, when I see my brother who is sinning, I cannot judge him. I'm not saying that you cannot judge him. In fact, the Bible says, folks, in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 12, it says in there, Paul says, it is not my responsibility to judge the outsiders. But it is your responsibility. It is definitely your responsibility to judge those who are in the church who are sinning. So, folks, God is teaching us that we as Christians can also judge. But be careful when you judge people, you don't judge them with vindictive spirit. You don't judge them with a critical spirit. You don't judge them like you want to expose them and you want to cause embarrassment upon their lives. That's not the, that's not the main reason why Christians judge. You know, if you go to the Bible, I think in Galatians chapter 6, verses 1 to 2, the Bible says, brothers and sisters in the Lord, if you see anyone who is sinning, if your brother or sister is sinning, is caught in sin, you, you who live by the Spirit, should restore that person gently. So, folks, elsewhere in the Bible, God is commanding us to judge, especially those who are in the church. But you got to do it with a purpose of restoration and reconciliation. You have to do it with a gentleness and kindness and mercy and love. You're going to just judge them. Folks, you can get, you see the Bible says, five, you hypocrite. If you judge people with a critical spirit, you are a bunch of hypocrites, a bunch of pretenders, a bunch of fakes, a bunch of uh, plastic mask wearers. You are phonies when you judge them without looking at yourself first, when you judge them with a critical spirit. Folks, we can judge. Look at that. Verse 5, you hypocrite. First, Take the plank out of your own eye. How do you judge other people? First, take the plank out of your eye. You have to put your house first in order. You have to put your life first in order. You have to look at yourself first. You're judging other people. 
he's committing this, he's committing this sin and that. But you look at yourself first. Maybe you, are, you have full of pride in your heart. You have to get rid of your sins first. You have to take out the log out of your eyes so you can see past the logs. You have to be clean first before God, before you judge other people. That's the number one when you judge people. And then the Bible says, when you remove your logs out of your eyes, when you remove your sins out of your life, then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. Because, folks, if you're full of hatred, if you are living in sin, if you cherish sins in your heart, you cannot see clearly. How can you judge other people when your heart is full of sins? That's why you got to confess your sins. You got to be clean before God, first before you judge other people. Yes, you can judge. Yes, you can judge other people, folks. But you have to do it with full of grace and also with full of truth. Now, some people they judge other people only with full of truth. No full of grace. They would tell people, hey, man, what you're doing is wrong. Man, you are living with a, with a, with a woman that is not your wife. Man, you're going to go to hell. See that? So like they're very really like, they always judge people with a critical spirit, folks. There is no sin. There is no, there is no love in there. There is no mercy in there. There is no goal of restoring the person to God or or to the or to the to, to, to his brothers and sisters. They just want to judge. They want to expose other people of what they are doing. They want to embarrass people, folks. You cannot do that. You got to have full of grace. Folks, if you make an issue out of sin, then the solution to sin, you dispel the proclamation of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ with self-righteousness. You focus on the sin, you know. It's a bad business to reform other people, especially the unbelievers, before these people become Christian or become regenerated in the spirit. Like, you know, some wives, you know, they have problems with uh, husbands. And the husbands come home and they're very, you know, like they're alcoholic, they're drunkard. And then the wife, like, they have, sometimes they have, you know, sharp mouth, you know. Hey, look at this, you're, you're drinking, you're, gonna, you're drinking, you're drunk again, you know. And if you do that always, you know, you will destroy your brain, it will destroy your liver, you're going to have hepatitis, you're going to have cancer and blah, blah, blah. So every day the husband hears that all the time. So they make an issue out of the sin, folks. But there is no love in there. There is no kindness in there. See, folks, when you approach those sinners, you can approach them with tears in your eyes. With love and compassion and forgiveness and mercy in your heart. You can approach them with a godly love of the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks. Jesus told a story about this woman in the Bible. It's in John 8. At that time, Jesus was in a temple court. He was teaching at dawn. Can you imagine that at dawn? He was teaching to his disciples. And then all of a sudden, you know, the Pharisees and, and the teachers of the law, they brought in a woman. They threw the woman to the feet of Jesus. And they said, Jesus! We caught this woman in the act of adultery. She's a sinner. She's guilty. She's an adulteress. And according to the law, Moses commanded us to kill her, to stone her to death. What do you say about this woman, Jesus? And then Jesus took down and began to write something 
on the ground with his fingers. And the Pharisees and the teachers of the law kept questioning him. What do you say, Jesus? What do you say? She is guilty. We need to stone her to death. She needs to die because of her sin. And Jesus straightened up and said, Let any one of you who without sin cast the first stone. Folks, those Pharisees, they were holding the stones in their hands. And their hearts are much harder than the stone in their hands. They want to kill the woman. And Jesus said, he who without sin, let him cast the first stone. And folks, what happens? The Pharisees drop the stones and they slip away one by one from the oldest to the youngest until Jesus was the only one left and the woman standing. And then Jesus straightened up and, and, and asked the woman, Woman, where are your accusers? Has anyone left to condemn you? And the woman responded, No, sir, no one. And Jesus said, Then neither do I condemn you. And then the Bible says in there, the Bible says, Jesus said, go and from now on sin no more. See, folks, when we pass judgment, there needs to be full truth and also full grace. If it's all grace, full grace, full grace, it's not good. Maybe the liberals will say, neither do I condemn you. It's okay to sin. It's okay. It's okay to commit adultery. You know, it's okay to, to abort the babies. It's okay to do sexual uh, uh, sins. It's okay. That's fine. It's okay. I understand you. Neither do I condemn you. But is there truth in it? Is there truth in it? Jesus said, neither do I condemn you. But Jesus said, go and sin no more. The truth is, sin no more. Maybe the Pharisees would say, sin no more. Sin no more. And I will stone you to death. Sin no more. Without saying, neither do I condemn you. See, folks, God puts that together full of grace and full of truth. It's a beautiful harmony. It's a beautiful picture how to judge people. You've got to be very careful, folks. We as Christians, we tend to judge other people with a very critical spirit. Oh, the Bible says, 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 folks. You can't do it. First, take out the log from your eyes. Second, you can judge them, but in a gentle spirit. Don't judge them like, oh, he's a sinner. You go to Facebook, right? You don't do that. Or you talk to your pastor, or you spread this false information, right? You don't do that, folks. You don't. You, 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 you. Some of the meanest people in the world, folks, are Christians. You know, I've heard so many Christians in the past. Man, they have sharp mouth. They think that they are very righteous. They think that they're always right all the time. They think that God is happy with them judging other people, folks. You've got to be very careful. Take away that love from your eyes, that sin from your eyes, so that you can see clearly and you can help other people. So, folks, if you judge people without mercy, without compassion, God cannot use you. God cannot use you. Because if you try to judge people 
with a critical spirit, what's going to happen? Those people will despise you. Go to verse 6, please. Verse 6. Go to verse 6. Do not give dogs what is sacred. Do not throw your pearls to pigs. If you do, they may trample them under your feet and turn and tear you to pieces. Folks, dogs or pigs, those people who are unholy and sacred and pearls are the revelations of God, the truths of God, the precious truths of God, the word of God is sacred, is holy, the revelation of God, the counsel of God. You need to have like a wise discernment before you approach them. Because folks, if they aren't ready, they live in an unholy life. They don't know about the Bible. They don't know about the God. And you try to lambast them with a thou shall not, thou shall not, thou shall not, you're going to go to hell. Thou shall not, you're going to go to hell. They won't understand, folks. They need to know God first. They need to know the Word of God. You need to establish relationship first. See, the goal is restoration. You restore that person gently, with kindness, with mercy, folks. Don't spread the rumors. Don't spread gossip. The Bible says, folks, the Bible says, I think in Leviticus 19, 16. The Bible says, do not go about spreading slanderous gossip. Do not go about spreading gossip. For you will cause, for you will cause problems with your neighbors. I am the Lord, the God of Israel. So how do you approach them? This is how you approach them. The Bible says, in Matthew 18, verse 15, the Bible says, If you see a brother or sister, they commit sin. What you will do is this. Go to them privately. Can you say privately? And point out their faults. And if they listen to you, you have won them over. So folks, go to them privately first. You pray first or you fast first. You pray to God first before you approach them. Don't tell other people yet. Don't tell your pastor yet or your brothers and sisters or your family or your children. You pray to God first. And then go to them privately, ask wisdom from God. And then talk to them gently with kindness. With a purpose of restoration and reconciliation. And if they listen, then you have won them over. Michelangelo is one of the greatest artists in the world. You know Michelangelo? He's an artist, right? He's a sculptor. He's a painter. You know, he's an architect. He's a, he's a poet. You know, he's a very, very, he's a very, very good sculptor. And one day, folks, in Florence, in his place, he was walking past the quarry. And then he saw a, uh, a piece of marble, a piece of marble that is very, very ugly. And uh, they, 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 had, they had thrown it because it's ugly. It's misshapen. and it's ugly. And then uh, Michelangelo was looking at it for a while. And then he said, I want, I want that piece of marble. And they said, sir, you want that piece of marble? That's, 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 that's useless. Uh, that's ugly. You know, they have thrown it away. It's ugly. You don't need it. No, 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 no. I want the piece of marble because I see an angel in it and I want to liberate that angel from that marble. And folks, one day, he sculptured that marble. And out of that ugly, discarded marble, he made a sculpturing of a very beautiful angel. Can you show it to us, please, the last slide? A very beautiful angel. Look at that. That's what he did. See, we look at people who are sinners like, oh, they're ugly. They're not fit for the kingdom of God. They are dirty. They are sinners. They are going to hell. 
but Jesus, look at them. God looks at them as saints. Jesus, God doesn't love us for who we are. He loves us for what we can be. He changes us. And then, He can love us? No. He loves us first, and then He changes us. See, folks, look at those people as saints. Don't look at them like ugly, immoral, dirty, not fit for the kingdom of God. You want to see them as God sees them, folks. You want to see them with grace and compassion, with agape love. Jesus came to earth not to condemn, but what? To save the world. So you have to be very careful before you judge other people. Yes, you can judge, but look at yourself first. And then you have to approach that person with a gentle heart with kindness, and then you can win that person for the Lord. Amen. Let's all stand. Please all stand. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we thank you for your message. Lord, it is clear for us not to judge other people with a critical spirit. Help us, Lord God, to look at ourselves first. Help us, Lord, to stand clean before you first. Grant us, Lord, the wise discernment, the wise. The wisdom of God. Help us to apply wise discrimination and help us to avoid wicked condemnation. Oh, God, help us. To see beyond their faults and see their needs. Help us to understand that there is a story behind their sins. Help us, O oh Lord, to surround them with love and acceptance. And help us, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will work out sealing process in their hearts through us, O oh Lord. Give us the understanding and the wisdom on how to approach them, on how to win them, and how to bring them to you. Folks, give us the wisdom, O oh Lord. Give us the... Give us that mercy, Lord. Fill us with your mercy and grace. That when we judge people, we, we have mercy, Lord. Because the Bible says, mercy triumphs over judgment. And you say, Lord, if we are merciful, then you can, we can be shown mercy. Help us not to condemn other people, but help us to love them and to pray for them, O oh Lord. Oh, God, forgive us. Forgive us, oh, Lord, for having a sharp mouth. Forgive us, oh, Lord, for lacking discernment and wisdom and the grace and the compassion and the forgiveness. Forgive us, Father. Cleanse us, Lord, from all our unrighteousness. Forgive us, Father. Forgive your people today. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, I want to pray for you, people. If you need repentance from God, I want you to raise your hand. Maybe you judged people in the past, maybe because of self-righteousness or because of ignorance or because of insecurities. We need to repent from our sins. If you're that person, I can pray for you. So that's the first set of people I want to pray. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much.
And the second set of people, if you feel like condemned, somebody's judging you, you are condemned. And there is no way out. It haunts you every day. You are condemned. The spirit of condemnation is haunting you every day. Then I want to tell you, the Bible says, in Christ, there is no condemnation. In Christ, there is no condemnation. In Christ, you are complete in Him. In Christ, God sells you as the apple of His eyes. You are beautiful. You are worthy in the sight of God. And all you have to do is just confess your sins. The Bible says, if you, can, if you confess your sins to God, He's just and faithful to forgive you all of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So, Father, I pray for these people, Lord. I pray that you will forgive them. Lord, for judging other people out of self-righteousness, out of insecurities, and out of ignorance. Oh, God, forgive them and cleanse them with your precious blood. And Father, I pray also for those people who need Jesus, who needs you, Father, I pray. Lord, that you will open their hearts right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, your Holy Spirit will come into their hearts and forgive them and cleanse them, Lord, with your precious, with your precious blood. Father, Lord, do surgery in their hearts right now. Bring revival in their hearts in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, Father, we thank you for this simple message, Lord. Judge not. And Lord, help us, Lord, as we judge other people. That we have this grace in our heart. That we judge them with, with full truth and full grace. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I give you praise and I give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Folks, if you need prayer right now, we still have time. I want you to come forward, please. I want you to come forward and I pray for you. If you have any situation or problems, you know, aside from the topic today, or if you're sick or anything you need prayer for, I want you to come and let's pray. Please come and we'll pray for you. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord.